some assets and debts have both a marital and a non-marital component to them. For example, if you owned a home on the date you got married but continued to pay off the mortgage during the marriage, if you had equity in the home on the day of the wedding, that equity plus growth on the equity would be non-marital. Any equity realized from paying off the mortgage during the marriage or growth because of an increase in value on the property would be marital in nature. Similarly, some bring a 401k plan into a marriage and the contributions and earnings on the premarital contributions would be non-marital in nature while contributions made during the marriage and growth on those contributions would typically be considered marital. The same logic applies to debts. If you have a student loan you brought into the marriage and then continued in school during the marriage and used some of those funds to pay household expenses, the debt would have both a marital and a non-marital component to it. And so what we do as part of the process is trace which interest is marital, which interest is non-marital. Quite often we will get an expert involved to assist us with that process. Once the non-marital interest has been established, that interest is assigned directly to the person who holds the interest, while the marital equity or debts are divided usually equally.